Well, we've got our breast hook installed and we're on to the in whales. Now, I just wanted to show you this piece of lumber right here. This is the last piece of lumber that I've got out of this log. This is the same lumber that I built the rest of the boat out of, virtually everything, the frames, everything. This particular piece of lumber has been in the shop here getting dry for quite a while. I do have a few more pieces, but they're designated for the caps, actually. So I'm going to cut the in whales out of this piece. Now, what makes this piece different, really, is that it's a swept log, or the whole log different, is that it's a swept log. It's not a nice straight log. So I could go into a mill and find a log like this pretty easy because you can't cut a ton of lumber out of a log like this for most people's purposes. Not nice straight lumber, but I'm not looking for nice straight lumber. I'm looking for nice swept lumber just like this. There were, I can cut rails and different pieces right down the sides of it, just as nice as can be. I mean, if you were cutting deck timbers or something like that out of a piece of wood, you would like to have a piece of lumber like this, and especially quarter sawn deck timbers and stuff all comes out of like uh, the funniest pieces of wood that you might see. You know, this being one of them right here. So uh, we're going to show you how it's done, and uh, you can see, I'm sure, that it's got a, quite a sweep in it like that. And uh, I've set up a tiny little demonstration right here for you that's kind of funny, I think, but I've always told people that when you buy this stuff, we're looking for a log that's shaped like a banana, you know, and uh, so that's pretty descriptive. So what I've done really is then I started thinking I was down here shopping in this knife and I did have a banana and here it is right here. And I thought I might do a little demonstration on how this log was cut now. That log was laying this way in a band mill, and the mill came along, taxied along a set of ways, and took lumber off the top, and we'd peel it off, and then take the next layer and peel it off. And uh, that's the way this was sawn, but I've sawn uh, or set up my own little banana mill right here, and it kind of simulates the way it would have been done if it was done with a rotary mill. In a rotary mill, the lumber moves or the log moves and the blade stays still, so it's a lot different in that respect. So this uh, would represent our rotary blade, even though it's not rotating. It's just a knife stuck in the piece of wood there. And what we would do would be lay it down on the cradle like that on its side and dog it down nice and solid so it wouldn't rock and make a nice little kind of cut right here on the most swept part of it. Now, this is an exaggeration, so that first cut could be quite a bit longer than that, but uh, we're going to try it out right here. This is what you would do. You would make the first cut like, like that. Now, that piece would peel off, and then we would bring it back and stand it up like so in the mill, like that. Now, we'd make the next cut by taxiing right down alongside of it like that. We'd dog it right down against that nice little flat spot that we already cut, and then we'd start here like so, and we'd cut a piece off the side. This would be mostly bark and sap wood, and then we'd peel that piece off, and you can see the swept grain in it already, really nice looking. Now we're gonna draw it back on the cradle again, and then move it over, and maybe shim it a little bit and just make sure we've got the right direction. And then we're going to make another cut. Now this one's going to be a little bit heavier. Something like that. Maybe you'd take off a two by or so, something along like that. Now that is kind of approaching what this lumber would look like right there. Now the first cut that we make is going to be made right on this pencil line right here that I'm drawing alongside of this batten. Now I'm not going to try to follow that line with the saw, but that's where the blade's going to be going right there. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do is measure from that line five and a quarter inches over in a number of places along that line and make a new line and nail the batten down, like I said, five and a quarter inches away from that line. Now I'm going to take that same batten and I'm going to nail it right down alongside each and every one of those marks. I'm going to place a nail in the batten right next to the mark and then I can use my hand to position the batten up close to the mark and then tack it down and then I just move down to the next one, do the same thing, tack a nail in the batten, position the batten again, tack it down. So what I'm trying to do is nail it down to be five and a quarter inches away from a line that I've already fared, the line that I want to cut. And I'm going to use this batten really not to draw a line but just to guide the saw when I'm making the cut. Next one, right here.
Not only does this first cut remove sap wood and bark and all of that from one edge of the piece of wood that we've got here, it also leaves a nice graceful curve and represents one edge of one of the in whales. Now I'm going to remove the batten, pull the nails, put the batten on the other side of the lumber and tack it down to a nice curvature on the other side. It's not really parallel in this curvature like I said, it's just you know what it takes to make it right on the other side that's where we're going to tack it down and we're going to sight it and make sure it's right we're going to draw a pencil line alongside of it and then remove the batten again then we're going to make marks again just like we did on the first side five and a quarter inches at multiple spots along there and uh, take the batten again and tack it down along those marks now that batten's ready to guide the second cut I'm sawing along here at a nice steady pace because I want to maintain the RPMs of the saw approximately the same because it makes a cut kind of the same smoothness from one end of the cut to the other. So you just be patient and walk along nice and steady and that cut will be done in no time. Now that I've cut the bark and the sapwood off of both sides of this piece of lumber right here, you can see that the two sides are both curved and they're both curved a little bit differently because I kind of mocked them out from each side. I didn't pay attention to what the other side was like when I mocked that side. And uh, that means that the two sides aren't parallel to each other. Well, they're not parallel at all because parallel refers to straight lines actually and these are curved lines. So they're not congruent with each other is what I'm trying to say. They're both individually curved, a fairly graceful curve and that'll work into the boat real nice. And that's not to say that when I rip it off of there that it might not take a set anyhow, see? So you never know. You can't really rip a straight line on a piece of wood like this because after you rip it, it doesn't be, it's not straight anyhow. So basically what I'm doing is ripping out curves and you can see now I've got the nicest lumber on both sides to rip from and uh, I'm going to start out on that end and rip my way up this way and I'm using just a little standard rip fence on my skill saw here, just slipped in there and uh, most of these little fences like this, they won't get close enough to the blade on this side so I've added a little piece of wood on it because I want it to be two and three quarters of an inch away from the blade itself. That way most all that lumber is sitting right in here, right under the weight of the saw so I won't tip the saw back and forth and make a mess of the cut when I'm doing it. So basically pretty simple to do. I'm going to go make a rip. As I'm cutting along here, I'm keeping the fence of the skill saw rammed right up against that first cut that we made there so that I can't let the thing wiggle around at all. It's got to be held nice and steady. That's the only thing I've got that's available to hold it steady against. So I hold it steady up against that and pace myself along as I'm cutting there and uh, again try to keep the RPMs of the saw reasonably steady and it comes out really, really nice and it's at least as nice as the first cut. So we just walk from one end to the other, make sure the cord doesn't get hung up and try to do as nice a job as we can. Now I just finished making that first cut and uh, I'm just going to pick that piece up in a few minutes but what I'd like you to look at here before I do that is the gap on both ends. Now this piece pretty much stayed exactly the same because it's fairly wide but this piece sprung when I cut it. It opened up on that end and opened up on that end. So like I said, if I was trying to cut a straight line, it wouldn't have ended up straight anyhow. So this is what you get and uh, it's perfectly fine with me. So let's put this piece away. And now I'm going to dump this piece off because all the dust ended up on top of this piece right here. And then we're going to pick our saw up and make another cut from this end. There's nothing new here. The second cut's the same as the first cut. You just grip it and rip it. Now there's our two pieces that we ripped out right there and I'm just going to squeeze them up alongside each other just real quick like just like that just to see how similar they are to each other now. Look at that. They're almost exactly the same thing even though I ripped them both out to a different curvature and they both sprung differently. Look at that. They just pretty much ended up the same thing. So we're going to bend them from there anyhow into the boat. So 
we've got what we want, now we're just going to take them over and maybe run them through the bandsaw and thin them down quite a bit because they're an inch and a quarter thick or so. I only want three quarters of an inch in here, so I'm going to run them through a bandsaw and take most of the material off and then run them through a planer and get them down to three quarters of an inch finished on both sides. I've set up a fence here on the bandsaw and it's just under an inch away from the blade, so I'm going to be cutting my pieces about an inch thick. Now, I've also got a springboard set up right here so that it's kind of like another set of hands. When I put the piece of lumber in there, it's going to be just about this thickness, maybe a little thicker on one end and a little thinner in the middle, but you'll see it load up as I push a sample piece in there. And as I do it, the pressure moves back from what it looked like it was going to be on the corner to right up near the blade right here. Now, I'm going to push it a little bit more right up near the blade like so. And, uh, that's where I'm going to get started, but right here I'm going to show you another little demonstration. I still, even though I have this thing holding it up there nice and tight like another set of hands, I still got to be very mindful of the piece of wood against the fence right here because I've got a short fence and what happens is if it teeters off the corner of the fence like this, you can see it pull the blade right over because it's touching it. If you let it teeter off the corner of the fence at all, on either end of the fence, it'll start cutting thinner in the middle. So you really have to keep it against the fence very tightly. This thing helps me, but it's not going to do the job. It's up to us to keep track of it and make sure that it comes out right. Now the pieces, I've got kind of custom cut there and uh, I've got them curved this way. So you can see that when it's passing through there, they won't even touch the fence over here in some spots or on the other side, just in the middle right here. I've got to be very mindful to keep it up there nice and tight. And I also have the pieces curved like this so that it'll stay right down against the table right here in the middle as long as we hold the ends up just about the right height. I wouldn't want to put them through curved this way really because they would be hovering up off the table and it just wouldn't feel as organized. So what I've got to do now is just start the machine up and get started. Passing them through the bandsaw isn't as difficult as you might think. We've got a little friend helping us there right near the blade and uh, we just push it along nice and steady and we've got the thing set up with the curves the way we want it so it doesn't get forced off the fence or up off the table near the blade and it comes out pretty easy as long as you're kind of patient. So we just rip both pieces from one end to the other and then head over to the planer with them. We're running the pieces through the planer once on each side and we're going to keep track of the thickness. We'll have to measure it in between the passes there just to make sure we know exactly what we're doing and then refer to the gauge on the planer maybe. But, uh, you know, we just got to be careful. We want it to be a little bit of a heavy three quarters, which is kind of like 13 16. So it's only required two passes. And uh, once we've accomplished that, we can take them right over to the boat. We need to do one last thing before we install our in whales, and that's trace the starboard quarter knee, the one we did all our planning on, off onto the port quarter knee, and then saw that out on the bandsaw. Now before I get started cutting, I'm just going to adjust the angle of the bandsaw to be the same as the angle on the fit of the knee against the planking. Now, I just think that'll look really nice when I cut along there. I did it on the other side, it looked great. So what I'm going to do following along a curved line like this is I'm going to be really, really patient because the saw will go exactly where I want it to go as long as they don't push it too fast. As soon as you push it too fast, it kind of goes where it wants to go and uh, that's not going to work out for me. So I've learned to be really, really patient. Don't take the line away and uh, leave yourself a little bit of grace so if anything you've got a bump in it rather than uh, you know like a digger in it. At the other end you can see that I can't get around that corner right there. If I tried to do that the saw would bind up and all kinds of things would go wrong so I've just got to clip that piece off and then I'm going to set the saw at 90 degrees and nib that thing right off around there and it's actually at two different angles there but I'm going to blend those two angles together with a block plane a little later on. I've got my in whale clamped in position here on the port side and uh, I've taken advantage of the curvature that was in the wood already but it needs a little bit more than that to get it exactly in place so what happens when you're trying to clamp it in and curve it in place like that it, uh, you're edge setting it and what happens is it wants to roll a little bit so it wants to fall away from the frames on the bottom up here so 
what you have to do is keep the clamps as low as you can on this side to keep it twisted in there and kind of high over here on the outside because you want to cover up whatever dimpling you've done with the clamp uh, pretty easily with the guard because it's pretty tricky to hold blocks on the inside and blocks on the outside and you have to make a decision and I've decided not to put any blocks on the outside but what we've done here now is we've got it in position pretty close to where we want it and uh, it's above the frames a little bit just like the planking is, just like I said, so that I can actually plane the top of it a little bit with a plane later on and the guard and the shear plank all at once actually and tune it up without banging into the frame heads with the plane. So that's why I cut the frame heads down a little bit low. And now the next thing we're going to do is fit it right up to the breast hook and I'm going to do a saw fit up there again. I'm just going to pass a hand saw between the fit up there because it fits awful close right now and rather than take it down and try to trim it with a plane and do all these things I'd have to take it out of position again. I'm going to pass a hand saw through the cut just like I said and then I'm going to go back aft and bang it up and I expect that end of it to fit really really nicely and uh, I won't have to reposition it. I'll just slug it with a sledgehammer on the other end and then that end is going to fit. These saw fits can be a little bit tricky but this one right here is not too bad because the piece is fairly broad and uh, one piece is sticking out a little bit. I'm able to use that as a guide to start. And you just have to be nice and steady and uh, don't want to use a saw that's too grabby. And uh, with this one, the sawdust comes out the bottom so it cleans itself really as you're sawing it and you get to look at it as you're sawing it. So you know where to stop and uh, it's been really actually pretty simple to do. So. Let's see how it mates up after we're done here. One healthy one. All right. Ready? Now I know that's tight up forward. I don't even have to go up there and look at it. It's tight. Now the next thing I'm going to do is transfer this mark right here over onto the side planking like that. And then I can remove the knee. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go back aft here and take this block out that was holding it up so I could get the square through up forward there. And uh, I'm going to adjust the length of it here and transfer the top of the transom the length up onto my piece like so and make a mark right there. Then I'm going to take a bevel set and set it at the angle between the top of the planking and the transom and uh, tighten that up like so and I'm going to strike a line from that mark that I made on to the inboard side of the in whale like that. Now that angle may not look exactly the same angle as the transom but when I lower it down in there it will be. The only thing I might find when I get it in there is that it'll be a little bit long possibly and I'll have to shorten it up but that's the same thing. We're fitting it in there until it becomes tight. Now let's see how we do. We're going to take the block out of there and just use it to hold it up like so. We'll remove the knee and then I'm going to lower this right down into position like that. And like I said, it's a littlest bit long but uh, really not much at all. So the angle's not exactly right either. So what I'm going to want to do is uh, do a little saw fit on that as well. It might actually fit when I'm done here. For this saw fit cut, we're using the transom as a guide. Now when you get started, you have to be really careful because the whole idea here is to cut off the end of the in whale and not cut into the transom. So you get started really, really carefully and then even as you saw along, you kind of influence the saw twist it a little bit as you're going along there because you just don't want to gaff up the transom at all. We'll make a few more passes and as we do, you'll see that when we shorten the bottom end of the in whale up, it starts to fit better and better. That looks good. Now, we're going to take our square and transfer this mark over onto there like that, put a little vertical line like so. Now I'm going to reach in and transfer that line on the transom that I had under the knee onto the in whale like that right there 
and now I'm going to raise the inwale up in the air and clamp it in place a little high, and then I'm going to draw a parallel line to the bottom of the inwale along up until it connects up here. This is the tool for the job right here because it's really easy to use. It's nice and lightweight, and as long as you don't push it along too fast, you'll, you'll do a nice, neat job with it. So uh, we're going to push it up until we get up to the line right there and stop and pull it right out. Now, let's see how we did. We're going to lower the in whale down, put that clamp away, make sure we've got it inside the frame in, in here like so. And then I'm going to pick up my knee and push the in whale in a little bit, place the knee in where it belongs. And we were hoping it would kind of bind up before the knee would go all the way down. And look at that, it has. So what I have to do is do a little fitting right here and the knee will drop right down in position and become real tight and it'll be just as tight here as it is on the other end. So I've got to adjust this just a little tiny bit and the knee will start dropping down into position exactly right. And uh, I think uh, it looks great. I like the way this runs up underneath the knee in here. We're going to put some screws up underneath it, up into the bottom of the knee like that. And of course, this all has to be fastened off. We're going to fasten it off here into the knee. And then we're going to fasten the knee off to the side plank. And once we've got that fit exactly right, and eventually we're going to bolt this off on the other side. But uh, I think it looks fantastic. I love the way the grain's coming around it here. Just the way we planned it, all the way into the corner, just like that. And that little blemish bothers me less and less all the time. I've got a little bit of fitting to do yet, and it'll fit down in place a little tiny bit more. But there's one in whale complete and in position. All we have to do is fasten it in and go on to the other side.